Hey guys, Doc. So today's video is going to be, we're going to talk about pH and I'm going to show you this new pH tester that I got that I like that's pretty accurate and it's pretty reasonably priced. So before we start this video, just a couple quick notes. Number one, I cover a lot of this in the lawn guides, so get the lawn guides. And on the lawn guides, I believe on most of them, I have a pH chart that shows you how the certain pH affects certain nutrients. So if you have a low pH, what nutrients aren't available to your lawn versus a high pH and why that's important. So today, um, I'm gonna freak out a little bit because the green measured a three on a pH, which is extremely, extremely low. So I'm gonna treat that. Now, when I treat it, so you don't get confused, I'm using agricultural powdered lime and I'm just gonna hand scatter it. That's normally done with a drop spreader. So most people don't have a drop spreader so you're going to use a granular lime. I also bought some granular lime that you would put into a spreader and spread out on your lawn. That's the way you normally do it. Now, you can do lime treatments consistently every few weeks, every few weeks, because to when you do your pH test, you're testing two or three inches down, and man, it takes a long time to correct a pH. My main goal on this was just to get that new seating in a zone that was close to a five or a six, which I was able to do. So don't get confused. I'm gonna use the powdered agricultural lime on here, but most people use the granular. The lawn guides cover a lot of this. Get the lawn guides, and I'll link to the, the, the meter in the description below. I'll put all this on the page for you. Here we Howdy. go. Howdy. So I finally found a pH meter that is reasonably priced, fairly accurate, and one that I, it's easy to use, and I actually kind of like it. I'll show it to you. Hey guys, so I'm out here at the farm property, and uh, I am getting a soil test done on these fields out here, so it'll be interesting to see um, how this compares to the actual soil test that I get back. But this thing, I've been going around, and I'm actually kind of surprised because it's pretty accurate. I'm gonna run back to the house here in a minute, and I'm gonna show you something that actually kind of shocked me. Um, and it was on the putting green. The putting green pH is dead, dead low. I mean, like in the threes. And I'm like, oh, that's got to be one of my problems. So I'm going to run out here real quick and uh, we'll take a pH reading on these fields. So, you know, a lot of these gadgets are, you know, made in China and they have a lot of worthless information on them half the time. I mean, like they have a sunlight meter to show you how much sunlight. Dude, I know how much sunlight I'm getting. Why do that? You push the um, on button. And it's going to come up and it's going to know why it defaults to Celsius. So I'm going to have it. Oh, I know why. Because if you hold this and shut it off, you hold that for two seconds and it shuts it off. And so it probably converts it back to Celsius each time. So it shows me the temperature. It shows me a reading. It shows me a temperature. I'm going to make sure you can see this. It shows me the current temperature. Um, it says it's dry out here. It says it's dry, 80 degrees, and the sunlight is high. Um, take the tip off. After each use, you're going to clean this off. But all you have to do is put it in the ground, or actually push pH and put it in the ground. And that's what I want to do. It's actually not bad out here because I can monitor the, the, um, the soil moisture out here, too. I can get a reading on it at you know at four or five inches and see if I need to water because it always looks dry out here so I'm gonna take the tip off and let's put it let's put it here in one of these tilled areas oh man it's so it's hard and right now I am reading I am reading wet, 82 degrees. Soil temperature, I mean, pH is 5.8. That's actually not bad. That really isn't, that's not bad. So let's take another reading. This thing reacts really quickly. So when I pull it out of the ground, I think you can see it. When I pull it out of the ground, it's right at 7.0. That's a good indication to me that things pretty accurate. So you want your soil to be moist, and if your soil is dead dry, you're going to have to add water to it. <clears throat> so 5.8, and shows it as wet. Six point four, six point two. Six 
6.3 and when I pull it out when I pull it out it shows a 7.0 5.6 So that's actually a great example as to why when you're doing a soil test you want to go back and forth and take samples so that you basically get an overall consensus of your plot. You also don't want to mix your front yard and your backyard do two soil tests because I'm telling you they can be really different so let's go down in this field and uh, let me take a couple readings down here 5.9 I can't even get it to go in man this soil is so tough 4.6, This could be used a little bit of lime probably, but don't forget these fields were actually for, they had a, I think it was sheep or goats or something out here. So a high manure content will typically give you a little bit higher, a lower pH. Okay, so just a side note here. After my soil test and my pH meter, this was a big issue. This was a three point something on the pH. I gotta get that pH up fast. So <laughs> I am taking powdered agricultural lime and I am coating this heavy. See that? I'm watching which way the wind goes and I'm putting a heavy layer of lime out here because what I'm going to do now, oh, wind is shifting, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spike aerate this and then water it in. Uh, I've got a Billy Goat aerator, and I love that thing. I can do small spikes, I can do big spikes, thick spikes, and I can do core aeration as well, too. You know, some people say, why don't you buy this type of reel mower, this type of reel mower? Instead of spending five or $6,000 on a reel mower, I'd rather spend have you buy a $2,000 McLean and spend three grand on an aerator that you'll use three or four times a year instead of renting it because that's what I would personally rather do. So, I'm all, I threw out agricultural lime. I've uh, done the spike aeration. Now I'm gonna water it in. I've actually got a little bit of seed. After we roll this and cut it, I'll put out a little bit more seed. It should be good. So now, <laughs> I have put, I have uh, spike aerated this. Excuse me, I put lime down. I spike aerated and then I have been soaking it and soaking it and soaking it. And then I cut it and then I soak it, soaked it again. So I know I'm not going to have an impact on this, you know, three or four inches deep. But what I care about is that first sort of half inch to one inch because this is all baby new grass and that's really what I'm focused on. I'll take care of the deeper later. So yesterday when I did this, all my readings 
all my readings were um, either low, which means it was too low to register, like below three, or it was like a 3.1 to 3.7, the whole place. So let's do this again now. So let's put it on pH. I'm showing 7.0. And let's just go half inch. <clears throat> Look at that. Isn't that great? So there I am. 5.6 5 5.6 5 See if I go up high I'm a 6.1 If I go deep I'm a 3.1 So I've been able to get that first let's say half to three half inch up to close to 6.0. When I go deep, I'm still at three. So what I need to do is I need to come out here on a weekly basis and I bought a bag of granular and I'll hit it very lightly granular every single week, every single week. I'm gonna hit this and just let it work its way down over the next couple months. Hey guys, so that's all done. So I cut it, I did the pH treatments. I've been watering, watering, watering. I actually put down some additional seed on there. I installed the flag. <laughs> I installed my cup and my flag on it. And I went to my irrigation system and because I have new seed on there, I am running, anytime that green gets hot, I am running about a seven minute run. I have sprinkler heads all around it. And so at noon, I'm doing a seven minute run. And then at 2.30ish, right around there, I've got a schedule to do another run on it just to keep this thing moist and moist and wet. Anyways, that's how you do it. That's how you treat for lime. Use granular on your lawn, and I'll talk to you later. Doc. Mm -hmm.